The Grand Master of the Jedi Order during the centuries leading up to and throughout the Clone Wars, Yoda was the leader of the Light Side Order right before the Dark Times and was regarded as the most powerful Jedi to ever exist in history up to that point. But exactly how powerful was Yoda, and what was the centuries old Jedi Master truly capable of when unleashing the full might of his abilities? For this video, we'll go over his greatest demonstrated feats in regards to his lightsaber combat skills, direct force abilities, and then finally his extensive knowledge of the force for non-combative purposes. When it came to lightsaber combat, Yoda was second to none. A master of all seven standard lightsaber forms, Yoda specialized in Form 4 as he believed it best suited his small stature and short reach. Form 4, also known as a Taru, essentially required the user to utilize the force to enhance their bodies and use them as a weapon alongside their lightsabers, performing physical feats that would otherwise be considered impossible. This was purely an offensive form, and to use it at its most effectiveness, one had to always be on the attack and constantly moving around. And Yoda not only specialized in this form, but straight up perfected it, as when fighting at his full strength, the Jedi Master was able to overpower any opponent of his, as every strike he dealt was done with flawless precision. But on top of his mastery of Form 4, Yoda's speed that he was able to achieve through the Force was what made him so deadly in one-on-one -on -one combat, as only a very small handful of Force users of his era could even compete with it at full force. Just to give you an idea of the difference of speed between Yoda and other Jedi Masters, Yoda once demonstrated this very fact to a group of Padawans a few decades prior to the Clone Wars during a lecture. Completely unarmed, Yoda had the three Jedi Masters Plo Koon, Sai Si Tin, and Deepa Bilaba attack him at their full strength. And even with three of some of the most talented duelists attacking him all at once, the unarmed Yoda was able to evade their blows with complete ease. A lesson to show the students that with the full power of the Force, even a weapon wasn't required to overcome some enemies, and to perhaps even show them all why a small old man like himself was the one who held the title of Grand Master as well. Beyond that, Yoda had also demonstrated in beating some of the other greatest duelists to exist within his lifetime, including even Mace Windu, who was unable to fully contend with the Grand Master's fury of attacks during a practice duel. Even Count Dooku himself, who was regarded as the finest duelist of his generation, was unable to contend with Yoda for more than a few seconds before going on the defensive. During their fight in Attack of the Clones, Dooku was actually very confident that he could beat his former master. When they began, he unleashed his full power, only to have it be completely repelled by Yoda's defensives. The Sith Lord's initial confidence in victory was quickly shattered in only mere seconds, as he was now fighting for his life against his former teacher. He finally had to resort to a cheap trick to distract Yoda so he himself could flee onto his ship. Funny enough, when Dooku got back from his duel with Yoda, he quickly added the Jedi Master to the list of people General Grievous should never confront in battle, later telling the cyborg general that he better pray to the stars that he would never be forced to engage with Yoda, as it would mean his certain death. Even Palpatine, who was regarded as the most powerful Sith Lord to ever exist, was genuinely afraid of fighting Yoda in a lightsaber duel, as he knew he would likely lose. That's why when they dueled in Revenge of the Sith, Palpatine desperately tried to get away from Yoda and create as much distance between the two, so he could instead use his force abilities to fight, in which case the Sith Lord had the advantage in. Yoda knew of this fact as well, which is why he worked so hard to get close to his opponent in an attempt to re-instigate their lightsaber duel. But even when Yoda did get close again, Palpatine didn't take any chances and instead unleashed the full power of his Force Lightning, which was enough to repel the already exhausted Grand Master into knocking him back into the Senate's central chamber following the Force Repulse that was created between the two. Compare this duel with Palpatine's fight against Mace Windu, and you can see the difference in how the Sith Lord treated his two opponents, where with Windu, he was confident enough in his own lightsaber skills to continue dueling with his opponent, but when against Yoda, he quickly resorted to his force abilities, which he was far more confident in. A great example of what a fight between Yoda and most other force users would look like was shown when Ventress tried to confront him. While quite formidable of a fighter, and very dangerous against most other Jedi, Ventress was nothing when compared to Yoda, who casually disarmed her like she was a lightsaber rack. She was so little of a threat to Yoda that he even returned her weapons back to her after making a fool of her. With all of this being said, Yoda's biggest weakness when it came to his lightsaber dueling abilities was of course his age. His intensive fighting technique was extremely taxing on his old body, 
which resulted in him only being able to sustain himself at full strength for a short period before needing to retreat due to exhaustion. When it came to using the Force itself as a weapon, Yoda demonstrated feats that were unimaginable to most other Force users. One of his most notable uses of the Force was during the Battle of Coruscant. During the initial landings of the Separatist armies on the city planet, Yoda casually stared down the thousands of battle droids that were approaching him before picking up hundreds of them and lifting them up so they'd collide with the incoming enemy starfighters. Shortly afterwards, he denied a massive Separatist transport of unleashing its droid compartments, in which he then pushed back so that it would collide and explode into another transport ship that he was also manipulating with the Force. Later in that same battle, Yoda, with the help of Mace Windu, was able to force push thousands of battle droids back. He then continued to fight in the front lines of the planet-wide engagement along with the other Jedi in a battle that was said to have lasted an entire day. Another notable feat of his was using the Force to bring down the top of a mountain in order to create a massive avalanche as a way to destroy a small army of battle droids. A less direct but extremely powerful Force ability that Yoda was a master in was Battle Meditation. Its usage was capable of amping up nearby allies, boosting their morale and making one man feel like a hundred when they fought. His most notable use of this ability was during Kashyyyk, where the heavily outnumbered clones were able to overcome near impossible odds as a result. His usage of the Force for defensive purposes were also beyond that of any other Force user of his era. His ability to contain Palpatine's Force Lightning, which was known for being capable of turning beings into dust at full power, was perhaps Yoda's greatest feat in demonstrating his mastery of using the Force for defense. All in all, when it came to using the Force for combative purposes, only a small handful of either Jedi or Sith could contend with him without being utterly obliterated. Also, in canon, Yoda straight up fights a gigantic Force mountain and wins with relative ease by overpowering it with his own Force abilities and forcing it to submit to his will, which in of itself is one of his most incredible feats even among Legends material. With centuries of studying and exploring all aspects of the Force, Yoda was basically an archive of Jedi lore all to himself. He was so knowledgeable of the Force that he was capable of creating holocrons from scratch and locking them so that only those worthy in the light side were allowed to open them for their contained secrets. He was also known to sense disturbances of incidents happening across the galaxy, whether they be catastrophic events or just the intense feelings of a fellow Jedi. And finally, one of his most unique abilities was using the Force to straight up sustain himself during his final years. By the time he was training Luke, Yoda's physical body had gotten very sick and was on the verge of death, with it only being sustained by the Force and his sheer will to train the galaxy's last hope. The very moment he believed Luke was ready, Yoda stopped sustaining himself with his powers and slowly let his age overcome him as he became one with living force. Thanks for watching this video. Help support the channel by becoming a member on our Patreon page, and be sure to subscribe for more videos like this one. And as always, may the force be with you.